Thank you. Uh, so welcome to the weekly webinar. My name is Sean Kay from Smile Teachers, as most of you know. And tonight's webinar is really about helping you to climb away from burnout. How to be in a place of significance, love and belonging and safety. Three of the basic fundamental human needs that we not only need to be an inspiring teacher, but we need it to be an alive and well human being. And now for all of those joining in on Zoom, most of you would have seen my story. Uh, most of you have been following for quite some time where I was burnt out, I was mentally ill, I was not well uh, three and a half to four years ago. I took a significant period of time off teaching to really go back and, and heal. And now with COVID and where we're currently at, this has actually been the perfect opportunity for me to, to catch a breath after what's been three years of Smile Teachers, of trying to build a um, small business, not hard, I mean, sorry, not easy, not hard, not easy, trying to continue uh, impacting in education as a teacher originally, also a challenge, but trying to balance business and teaching at one point in time was a very big challenge. Uh, but now I've got the space and the time. I've been really committed in 2020 to making a difference and adding value to the teaching community. Hence why I do the weekly webinar, why we ran an online education summit last week where we had over a thousand educators from 25 different countries live online. This was just showing us the power of doing these events online now. And look, already we've got 10 people on Zoom, five on Instagram and eight on Facebook. That's almost 30 people on a Wednesday evening committed to learning and bettering themselves. So first of all, can you just give yourself a little pat on the heart for being here? Honestly, thank you so much for showing up and thank you for at least paying attention to what I have to say for the next 28 minutes. I promise we will finish on the half hour. My goal is to get through 30 different points or strategies in that 30 minutes. Now, this presentation tonight is a preview or a sneak peek or what we might call a taste test or an entree to the 30 Shades of Burnout course that we'll be launching next week. This is where I've been hiding in my den in Dunsborough, building these courses so that teachers have the very best in PD and access to the very best learning from the comfort of your home, your workplace, your office, all in one location. Because one thing's for sure, when I was teaching full time, and I'm sure many of you are the same, and I'd actually ask you to put something in the chat, maybe a, a yes or a no, uh, if you really are sick of going through boring PD, where you're sitting there for a whole day, maybe a whole session, a whole workshop, listening to somebody talk, and you really don't walk away with any value. Uh, Caitlin's putting in definitely. And, you know, I like to think of myself as an innovative presenter, as somebody that has people getting up, interacting, moving around. So I want this presentation to be much the same. I want us to be engaging and paying attention to what we're doing. And the way that we do that is by taking into account different uh, activities. Uh, when I'm doing my presentations at schools and my workshops, I, I do, I try and take in everything, auditory, visual, kinesthetic, um, all getting people involved, moving around, sharing and connecting. And that's what I'll try and do as much as possible on this live. So without taking up any more time of the, of the jargon and the, the discussion about what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to get underway sharing with you what 30 Shades of Burnout is all about. This hasn't just come poof out of the blue. I met an incredible medical doctor and professional who was building this framework for uh, the medical profession in 2016, Daniel Friedland, which I'll reference in the presentation. And this was all heavily backed by research. Uh, it had been implemented in a number of organizations across the world. And Daniel gifted me this framework and, and advised me and encouraged me to adapt it to teaching. Now, it was honestly dry. It was very uh, sequential and rigid. 
And what I've done over time is I've given it life. I've given it energy. I've given it real, relevant, practical strategies. And my aim tonight is for you to walk away with one thing, at least one thing that you will start doing tomorrow to help you climb up away from burnout and to be in a place of abundance and fulfillment. So if you're already, wave both hands in the air, pretend like I can see you, shake them around, nod your head, okay? Try and nod your head while you shake both hands, okay? Quite hard. Um, I'm gonna get you into this presentation. The beauty of technology, sharing my screen all the way from Dunsborough with over 25 people in what I'm guessing is about 15 different locations. Uh, so those of you that have seen or heard Lyndall talking on the chat, Lyndall's right here on the first slide. Uh, so this is Lyndall under the hello sign, that beautiful human being. Uh, this is a photo of our recent retreat uh, in Bali, Indonesia, where I had these 10 beautiful women and one amazing man come away to really go deep into this stuff, to spend six to seven days working on self-care. And you can see here on the final day, the happiness, the fulfillment, the energy, the smiling of all of these wonderful teachers. And even now, we caught up on a call on Sunday, they are still radiating this bliss and positivity. And all it takes is for you to commit to this personal growth journey to learning about stress, to learning about your purpose, to figuring out what impact and what legacy you want to leave on the world. And I'm sure many of you are still working in education like Michael after so many years because you're passionate about changing the lives of young people. But we can do that from a far greater place of abundance and energy. We don't have to be depleted and stressed and burnt out. And I know this because now, you know, it's 6 p.m. on a Wednesday. Normally, most people would be kicking their feet up on the couch. I've still got so much energy and inspiration because of many of these strategies. If you want to find out more, there's all my information. Okay, let's check in. In the chat, whether you are on Instagram, Facebook, or Zoom, how are you feeling? One word. Are you feeling like this cat? I like to use gifts. Uh, are you feeling like this cat where you're carrying around the weight of the world, you're dragging your backside along the ground, exactly like this fluffy friend, but just putting in the chat one word. How are you currently feeling? Elated, excited, tired, burnt out. Be honest, okay? This is about having honest conversations. How are you currently feeling? Because this simple little check-in maybe all you need to really start cultivating some more positive feeling emotions. Uh, so we've got some great shares here already. We've got excited, content, stressed, overwhelmed, excited, interested, fantastic. We've got some great words. Now, for those of you that are putting down, you know, overwhelmed or stressed, my advice to you is to allow and surrender to that feeling. Because what happens is we have this shitty committee in our mind is telling us, don't be overwhelmed, don't be stressed, don't be uh, worried, don't be tired. And guess what? That breeds more of that feeling. So try and pick something or focus on one thing from this presentation that is going to help you move from overwhelmed to content. And then once you're feeling content, try and find something else that's going to help you to move to excited. Okay, because it's a long way from overwhelmed to excited if we're looking at emotions. But if you can learn to just shift your state from overwhelmed up towards excited, you're starting to win. But this is the first part of the process, being able to tune in and check in and make sure you're feeling okay or not okay. And either is fine. Next little thing, what made you smile today? And I wanna see everybody sharing. What was something that really made you smile today? And this lady makes me smile every time. 
I use this in a presentation with uh, Sacred Heart College in uh, Perth with their senior school about finding your purpose. Now this lady's purpose is winning this dog show every year, the world's greatest dog show. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can see the happiness and joy that she gets from being on purpose. But what made you smile today? What's one thing that made you smile? Because when you do the first question, how am I feeling? And you're focused on overwhelmed, stressed, tired. But then you move to the second question, what made you smile? It's like, oh, that's right. I had a really positive conversation with that old friend today. Or I had a wonderful email from my old metalwork teacher, Mr. Pepper. Sorry, I don't mean you're old, Michael. I mean old teacher. Uh, it was a while ago. But it was brilliant to receive that email. That made me smile to know that somebody who invested in my education, so I'm not going to say how long ago, really is still interested in what I'm doing. And that, that gives me so much joy and so much gratitude to know that people are out there like that. And, you know, he's not the first previous teacher that has reached out. That makes me really happy. So we've got some great things in there that made us smile. Sharing memories at a wake. Very, very powerful. An elderly man getting excited when he saw toilet paper on the shelf. The smallest little things. Picture of a friend's newborn baby. Look, it is so easy and we've just got to check in and tune in to what is making us feel good to start to shift our state. Okay, so we've had a little check in. Thank you for the interaction. Leanne Summers completing a craft project. Love it, would love to see a photo. Send it through to me. Um, 30 Shades of Burnout, here we go. This is the fun stuff. It's gonna be fast, okay? It's gonna be hot. It's gonna be get us nice and sweaty or get me nice and sweaty, like 50 Shades of Burnout, no, just joking. Um, I've not even actually watched it, to be honest, or read the book, but it makes for a really great course topic uh, and it's really engaging and catchy. So 30 Shades of Burnout. It's a new course that I've been working on the last few weeks. It's going to be online and you'll be able to do it self-paced over a period of time where you can do modules. Uh, and there are, there are, these strategies are real quick little strategies that you're gonna to see tonight. In the actual course, there are resources, there are downloads, there are questions, there are reflection pieces to really help you avoid burnout. I don't want any teacher to go through burnout. And if you follow these steps, you won't. I know you won't. The research backs it up. The over 6,000 teachers that we have worked with uh, over the last three years, not all of them avoided burnout, but a huge percentage have. And I credit that to a lot of the work that we're doing. So here we go, the preview. Why 30 shades of burnout? First of all, this is important. And this is really important to acknowledge, especially for those of you who are in managerial positions who have teachers under you. Because this, this is alarming for me. This is what inspires me to keep serving and to keep showing up. Because this was, this was from a survey that we did with our Smile Teachers community in January and March. Some of you filled this survey out. It was anonymous, but the results were staggering. And what it's showing is that many teachers are already struggling with their mental health and many of them are suffering silently. And burnout is just one of a number of negative things that came out of this survey. So let's have a look quickly. This, this is the real data. If you would like to see the data, I'm happy to share with you the spreadsheets that have got this data collated. So 69% rated their stress level higher than a five okay, out of 10. On a regular day, the average was above a five. The second, 68% reported being too exhausted, too exhausted after work to practice self-care. Now, there's a number of things that can come into factor there, but most just said, oh, I'm too tired to worry about my well-being. 31% reported poor well-being. So we had a scale in there of poor to like fantastic, and 31% were down there with poor well-being. And I'm getting a few of you, I can feel it coming through that a few of you are nodding your head. 25% have no wellness goals. This was the one for me that really struck a chord. That out of the 206 teachers that completed the survey, 25% have no wellness goals. 
people, if you don't have a target, how can you possibly hit it? If you don't have a goal to improve your well-being, how are you possibly going to avoid burnout? It's going to be knocking on your door constantly. And 45% spent less than three hours a week on self-care. Three hours out of 168 on self-care. That is what inspired me to create these courses and programs online. Because I can only go out to one school at a time. But if I build this online, I can reach thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of teachers globally to share these strategies with them. Okay, so let's go. Let's get into it. As I said, this is going to be fast. This is going to be a lot of information. But all I'm, all I'm asking you to focus on tonight is picking one thing. One thing, and that's what I'm going to ask you to share. So stress best. This is the first section of 30 Shades of Burnout. It's understanding what stress actually is and how it's impacting you. But it's helping you to leverage stress, helping you to make stress your friend as such so that you can move away from reactivity towards creativity. So knowing how your brain works is the first thing. Knowing which stress mindset you are out of reactive or creative in any given moment is the second part. Then I'll teach you how to mindset reset. So how to shift from reactive, which is fight or flight, to creative, which is fulfillment and feeling inspired. Choose again method, we go into how to climb that emotional scale. So if you feel yourself being stuck with overwhelm, how can you move up the scale towards feeling happy and joyful? I'll take you through that in three steps. Okay, so the choose again method is three steps. And I can see many of you behind the screen wanting to know more, wanting to know more. I will share more after the presentation. But the choose again method is really simple. And what I teach is step one, you notice the thought. I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'm feeling tired, I'm feeling anxious. Step two is you forgive yourself for the thought. And you say to yourself, thank you for showing me what I don't want so that I know what I do want. And then step three is choosing a better feeling emotion. So that would look like, okay, overwhelmed. Feeling overwhelmed because there's lots happening at the moment. School's going back, COVID's happening, we're going online, there's lots happening. Take a moment to pause. Say the little prayer. Thank you for showing me what I don't want so I can clarify what I do want. I actually am feeling grateful that I even have a job because many people have lost their job and income and I've still got a job. So now I'm actually grateful that I'm in this dilemma of having to figure out how to teach online and I've chosen to not feel overwhelmed, but I've chosen to feel grateful because I'm overwhelmed. I hope that makes sense. We go through this in more detail in the course. Abundance activities. Abundance activities are what are the things, and I'm gonna ask you to put one in the comments. What are the things that you can do that come back to you? So it's like, what are the activities that you can put out there into the world that are going to come back to you? So this could, an example could be you're investing money in shares. Maybe not a good idea at the moment, but that money will come back to you. An idea might be you do the grocery shopping for an elderly person. You go and drop those groceries off and then guess what? They get so much gratitude, love and appreciation for you, it makes you feel better. Abundance activities could be gardening. Uh, Caitlin here's got bucket filling activities with my students to teach them kindness. It makes me feel happy, exactly. So it's what things can you do to help somebody else that then comes back to you. Because the reason I'm sharing this is because the fastest way to move from being reactive with stress to being creative with stress is to do an abundance activity. To do something that gives and something that you will receive, whether it's energetically, financially, spiritually, or verbally, but to do something for somebody else that then comes back to you. And the last part, is to remember that we're always stimulating growth. So life is about growth. Uh, Buddhist monks believe that growth equals happiness. And they talk about Kensho and Satori. Kensho and Satori are equally important. One is growing through pain, one is growing through insight. 
Kensho is when we just fail to look after ourselves. We don't look after our well-being. We ignore the warning signs and we end up with a mental illness and we're forced to do something to address that pain, which helps us to grow. Satori is where, like today, perfect example. I woke up this morning, I felt very heavy, constricted, and I didn't feel like doing a lot. My body, my energy, my spirit is telling me, slow down today, be out in nature, do something for yourself. So I did do that. And then while I'm sitting there by the ocean, staring out to sea, I know it sounds all very dreamy. I have this Satori moment, which is growth by insight, where we get this aha uh -huh moment. And it's like, all right, I know what I'm going to do next in this. I'm looking at my vision board over here. I've got a million different things. And if I get caught up focusing on that for too many days in a row, overwhelmed. Okay, taking the time to acknowledge how I was feeling, constricted, heavy, like the walls are, kind of, walls are caving in on me, go outside, get some fresh air, do some breathing, go for a walk, ah, it all feels better. So that's growing through Kensho or Satori. Now these points, again, we all go through in the first part of the 30 Shades of Burnout. Now what I just want you to acknowledge, and some of you have seen this slide like 10, 20 times now, and I, I bet you, you learn something new every time. There are three parts to our brain that are really important for stress. The brain stem, the midbrain, and the prefrontal cortex. What we're trying to do with these strategies is we're trying to get to our prefrontal cortex. We're trying to get to our coach or the voice that says, it's okay, Sean, slow down, take some time today. If we get stuck in the midbrain, that's all about meeting my needs, meeting my needs, meeting my needs. I need love, I need food, I need water, I need uh, sleep, I need all these needs met, I need uh, fulfillment, I need to be busy. If we get stuck there operating in our midbrain, okay, we're going to react. Okay, we're not going to respond, we're going to react. And the more we get stuck in the midbrain or the brainstem, the more fight or flight we get, which leads us to more stress, which slides us down the scale to reactivity, which slides us down the scale to exhaustion, which results in burnout. So what I want you to, to do is choose again to be able to stop and pause and to go to the prefrontal cortex. And the way that you can do that really simple is just a five second rule. When you catch it, okay, something's happening, you're catching it, you're feeling stressed, you catch it, you're taking a deep breath. Five seconds to respond instead of react. Respond over here, respond, creativity, respond instead of react. Because we need to get to that prefrontal cortex because that's the rational, that's the logic, that's the decision maker, okay? That's the important thing to note from how your brain works. 12 areas of balance. This gets us into the second section. Some of you have got this worksheet already. Some of you have seen this worksheet five, six times. Keep using it. Keep reevaluating and reflecting. If you've never seen it, download it now. That's the link you need. That is a link you need to write down, scribble down or copy. So this is 12 areas, 12 domains of self-care that we should at least have some sort of balance something in that area because if it's empty if it's a zero then we're already sliding down that scale towards burnout so getting really clear on where you can start and what's the one area not 12 not 10 not six what's one area you can start working on today or tomorrow for me at the moment the one area that i'm working hard on is adventure, is doing new things every day that aren't regular, like going to a new location, going for a walk in the bush, uh, going and taking my shoes off and wandering around on the beach, just doing new activities every day to give me that bit more abundance. All right, the next section and this stuff Okay, this should not be new. Some of this should be really simple for you, but you just need a little reminder, little 
click, click, get into that prefrontal cortex and remember to do these things. The first is self-care. That's the 12 areas of balance. We go through that, we work through that, we get really clear on your one thing in the program. The next, in this order, these are the things that you should really be putting your attention into. Sleep, okay? Seven to eight hours a night of quality sleep. Set a bedtime and a wake up time and stick to it. Next, your diet, your nutrition, your food is fuel. Get that right. Exercise. And then the reason I talk about career is because many of the teachers I work with and the principals I work with have no concept of what is realistic for how much time they should be spending on their career. Some teachers are doing 70 hours a week. Some are doing 40 hours a week. Some are doing 50 hours a week. Get clear on what is realistic. A principal I worked with recently said 50 is is realistic for a teacher that's at school and outside of school. Now, your hour of power, how you start your day will directly impact your wellness and your well-being. The first hour of the day is critical. How you start your day, how I start my day, 20 minutes of movement, 20 minutes of meditation, 20 minutes of journaling, every single day without fail. This morning, I was slightly off with that and it showed because the rest of my day, I wasn't feeling the best. Energy draining, energy renewing situations. Can you get really clear on what situations or people drain you and what actually renews you and gives you more energy? Because you want to have more renewing and less draining. We've all got this Nancy Fig Jam or Negative Nancy or Lemon Sucker, as Jeanette Besson calls them, in our staff who just drains us, how do we move away from them and towards people who actually renew us? The next is breath work. We will go into techniques to help you really connect to your breath. Right now while you're watching, because most of you are probably sitting down, some of you are on the couch, the reason I'm standing is because my breath keeps flowing through me. If I sit down when I present, I lose energy because my breath gets stuck. So while you're watching, either stand up or sit up tall, in through your nose, fill up and out through your mouth. In through your nose, shoulders up, out through your mouth. One more time, big breath in and slow exhale. Guarantee you, you're feeling a little bit more energetic just by using your breath. We'll look at conscious awareness, which is the secret to mindfulness. And we'll go into heart math, learning about your heart space and this place of magnificent intelligence in your chest. All right, who's paying attention? Woo! What's your one thing? Okay, so far in the chat, what is one thing that you're going to start doing? Just one, just one. What's one thing that you've learned? that you're interested in or that you'd like to start doing. Pop it in the chat. One thing and one thing only. For me, it's dancing more. Hour of Power, Caitlin, love that. Plenty more of where that came from in both Total Teacher Self-Care and 30 Shades of Burnout, including helping you get clear on that. Lindell, improved diet. Have a look at uh, Chef Cynthia Lindell. You love Chef Cynthia. To make our hour of power, Bianca, choose again. Elizabeth playing piano just for fun. Love that. Getting creative on the piano. I'd love to be able to uh, play a musical instrument. Michael, exercise for at least 20 minutes every morning. I just dropped the phone. Jordana, improved diet. Okay, guys, one thing that I didn't mention that I do go into in our programs is when we talk about these little goal settings, so say, for example, improved diet. Improved diet is a process-based goal. They generally don't come to fruition. So we either have process-based goals, outcome-based goals, or identity-based goals. So long story short, the secret to any goal, and I can see my mum here. I'm going to use my mum as an example. Hey, mum. Her uh, little thing or one thing is to exercise more. Now, 
this is this is being very creative and this is helping our brain and our subconscious is instead of saying exercise more set the goal of i will feel and look like an athlete i will feel and look like a yoga instructor i will and i know mum's sitting there laughing thinking like you know i'm 55 I don't, i'm not going to look like a you know yoga instructor as much as i'd love to but it's painting the picture in our head of what does that identity look like, feel like. Okay, so Michael, who I'm sure he's probably still as fit as he was when I was at high school, exercising for at least 20 minutes a day would be the process for having an abundance of energy as the school principal. Just having that abundance of energy. Getting really clear on what identity you want to show up as. For some uh, people and their parents, like say a, a, a young father, would be, I want to be a highly energetic dad for my kids. So then when they think, oh, I've got to go to the gym, it's not, oh, I need to go to the gym to work out. It's, I need to go to the gym so that I can get out, run around, be fit and healthy with my kids. So we go into that a little bit further in the program. It's about setting a goal that is really going to boom, make you move and get going. Play the piano for 30 minutes. Love that, Elizabeth. Fantastic. What if you put play the piano and just get lost in it, okay? Just get lost in it, a bit of like boom, 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 moving around, good energy. Uh, I can picture it now. Fantastic. All right, two more sections. The next section, this is section number three of 30 Shades of Burnout. We go into love and belonging. And love and belonging is the second part of that scale. So meeting our safety needs is the bottom of the pyramid. The second part is love and belonging, and we need that connection. Connection is really important. And then we go up to significance. But in love and belonging, okay, I'm gonna go th through these real quick because these ones take a little bit of uh, depth and a little bit of instruction. Three universal fears. We all have three universal fears. Fear of not being enough, fear of not belonging, and fear of not being loved. Every little anxiety, stress, negative thought that you have is linked to one of those three things. Fear of not being enough, fear of not belonging, fear of not being loved. Universally, we can map it all back to something that is linked to one of those things. So not getting all your work done on time could be fear of not being enough. It, you could be saying to yourself, oh, it's just because I have all these deadlines to meet. Well, it's not actually. It's the fact that you're terrified of somebody thinking you're incompetent or you're terrified of your boss saying, why is this not done? And it's the shame and the guilt that comes with that. I can't want to get lost in that. Collaborate. Now, collaborate, broken down into Latin, is col and labore. Col means to work, labore, together. Work together. If you want love and belonging, partner up, do some projects, connect with people, collaborate. Do you have a mentor? Big question. My bet is that Michael's had many mentors in his time as a school principal. Mentors for me, so important. Greg Mitchell, Oscar Pillazon, Paul Dunn, Peter Bothy, great mentors that have helped me in my time. If you don't have a mentor, who do you have to help you and direct you? Okay, mentors are really important. The love languages. If you don't know what the love language is, I want every single one of you watching this to go and Google the love languages and to do the love languages test. It is free. It will show you how you love other people and how you best receive love. So powerful. We go through this in depth. Imperfections make you influential, okay? No hair, don't care. Five years ago, it was my biggest insecurity, my biggest worry, my biggest fear, my biggest stress. I used to go to nightclubs with hat on. So embarrassing. I used to be on the dance floor in a nightclub with a hat on. A girl would rip my hat off and I would be terrified. I'd be like a crab out of its shell, like, whoa, whoa, what's happening? Where do I go? What do I do? I'd, I'd be terrified. It would like crush me. It was when I lent into learning and just being me and understanding that my imperfections make me influential, my life transformed. You can do the same. Volunteer vulnerability, as many of you are familiar, comes from Brene Brown, and it's talking about how do you show up authentically? 
without the mask, without the barriers, without the blocks, and you just go, this is me, this is who I am, love me or hate me, that's where you connect with people so powerfully. Brilliant. The last part, okay, you know I love dance, dancing's important, uh, but significance. We go into Ikigai, the Japanese secret, and it's about a reason for being, it's about finding your true calling and purpose. We will go through that, we'll share the, resource, the best resource that I've got, the Ikigai Canvas. It will help you get really clear on your why, on who you are, on what you're doing, on why you're doing it. Because if you can't articulate why you're a teacher, we need to work on it. Because if you can't articulate why you're a teacher, how you move through life and make decisions can be very confusing and you find yourself out of alignment. We need to know what your values are so that you can make informed decisions and be really clear on how you're showing up in the world. The next thing really important for finding significance, be, do, have. Many people in our culture and society get this wrong. They're so focused on having the looks, having the car, having the ideal body, having the ideal partner, having the promotion. And they're doing all these things that make them miserable to have that. I'm, plastic surgery is a big example. They're trying to have this ideal figure. So they're doing as much work, they're making as much money, they're putting it into their, um, you know, surgery to try and be happy. But we need to start with be people. We need to be happy. Be happy doing what we love and then have whatever little things we need. And they don't have to be extravagant. But the first part, it's about being who you are, being of service, being in service, being on purpose, doing something that you love, your ikigai. And then you have an impact and you have some nice things. The discipline systems. I want everybody to pay attention here. The discipline systems. We should all be doing these. Forget about posting on social media about what happened in 1972 or finding old photos and sharing them on Facebook. People don't really care. But discipline systems will change someone's life. Gratitude, acts of service and forgiveness. Sending somebody a message every day. I do this. Some of you have already received it. I send a message or a voice message or an email to at least one person a day telling them how proud of them I am and what I'm grateful for about that person. They don't need to respond, but I just send it. The next is acts of service. Whose day can you make that can't return it? This is a big one. Who can you do something for who can't reciprocate? It doesn't have to be that they can't reciprocate, but you shouldn't be expecting something in return. So when I'm in Bali, I like to just go to the local supermarket and buy a whole shopping bag full of drinks, of chocolates, of treats. And when I'm driving on the scooter, the next group of workers I see, I just rock up, drop that off. And it just makes their day. It costs me $10. So think of how you can do that. 80-20 is a real simple concept that we go through. And it's about the fact that 80% of your misery and unhappiness is probably coming from 20% of sources. So it's probably 20% of your life and you're focused on that 20% that's actually giving you 80% of the grief and vice versa. 80% of your positivity and happiness is actually coming from 20%. So it's really getting clear on what you focus on. Having a future vision. Do you have a future vision? Mine's over there on the board. It's about this big, this big, okay? I've got learn, love, heal, grow. They're my key business values. Got my personal values down the bottom. Education, spirituality, family, connection, lifestyle, and freedom. And then I've got a lot of drawings and stuff there. Because again, can you reach a target that you can't see? Close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Do a quick activity. Close down your eyes. Now with your eyes closed, no cheating, 
I want you to think about how many things in your room are black. Okay, open your eyes. How many things in the room are black? Have a look. Black, 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 black. Look around the room, even on you. What things are black? How many things are black? How many things are black? How many things are black? And close your eyes. Close your eyes, close your eyes, close your eyes. No peeking. Keep your eyes closed. How many things were white? How many things were white? Now, you can open your eyes. What that demonstrates is when we're not looking for something, we just don't see it. When we're not focused on something, we just don't see it. Now look around the room at all the things that are white. How many things are white? White, look for things that are white, look for things that are white. How many things are white? How many things can you see in the room that are white? And now close down your eyes. Now you can open them. Now some of you that time, you would have even looked at things that were off-white, grey, a little bit white, cream, beige, and you would have been counting them because your reticular activating system would have been tuned in to looking for things that were white. This is the same for your vision. This is the same for your goals. This is the same for your identity. When you have them set, your brain, your reticular activating system is tuned in and looking for those things. So you meet that person, you have that conversation, you see that ideal house. The next day you go to the shops and you see the pamphlet for the ideal house. The next day you meet the person that's selling the house. And it's like a series of magical steps that all line up because you have got a target, a clear vision, a clear vision. And the last part, this is what we get to by the end of 30 Shades of Burnout. And you can do this right now with your one thing. I want you to make a 30 day commitment, 30 days, 30 day commitment to doing this one thing. So in the chat, you can choose again, choose again, one thing, one strategy, one thing I talked about, one activity, one goal, one thing in the chat that you're going to commit to for the next 30 days. Just one. I'm gonna try and do this dance while I wait. Instagram's wondering what I'm doing because they can't see the screen, but there's a funny character dancing. So what's one thing you're going to commit to for the next 30 days? And why we're doing one thing is because the Michael Pepper sending a message of gratitude to someone, I love that. Mate, thank you for that. That is a brilliant one. Drinking a minimum of two litres of water. Lindo, fabulous. Okay, first thing in the morning especially, get that litre in. Caitlin, exercise, walk, run with my dog twice a day, every day. Terry, exercise regularly for 30 minutes. Choose again when I find myself having negative thoughts. Bianca Allison, fantastic. Bianca Allison, uh, we go through this in the program, but if you want to get one step ahead, have a look at Choose Again Method, Gabby Bernstein. Okay, her book, Super Attractor, is also fantastic. All right, beautiful people. Any question? Oh, sorry, Sean's top three. My top three for you, okay, to reflect on. Sleep, getting that real, real good sleep. Uh, and you can start by using an app called Sleep Cycle. Uh, Leanne, have a look at the Blissifling Systems. Leanne, you're already doing the Blissifling Systems. I know you are, but I really want you to get into them because we've talked about them probably five times now when I've visited your school. Um, but Blissifling Systems, Daily Gratitude, Forgiveness, and Acts of Service. If you want some help, Leanne, you know you can always message me. Love Languages, I absolutely love it, and breath work. hence why I'm waiting to do my accreditation again when COVID, well, not COVID, because COVID was never here. I'm not going to say when COVID was over, but I'm going to say when the world returns to normal and I can fly overseas, I'll be doing more breathwork training. Okay, so if you do want to know a little bit more, the SMILE course, uh, Total Teacher Self-Care, 
That mini course is available right now and it's free. Okay, there's five videos, five little modules. will take you 10 minutes a day for five days. You can access that at that link or you can open your phone uh, if you're not on it and open your camera, hover over the barcode and it'll download for you straight away. And then 30 Shades of Burnout will be live next week where there'll be a solo self-paced version. You can do it in a group where we'll have actual interaction. We'll have a live video on Zoom each week and you can talk to other teachers. Or if you are really somebody that needs support with this, we can work together. One-on-one, -on -one, me and you, once a week and helping you through this process. Is there any questions, beautiful people? Thank you for joining me. As I've said, this is every Wednesday, 30 minutes normally. I think I've gone a little bit over tonight, but I haven't really talked to anybody today. So you beautiful people get all my energy and affection. Um, I don't like saying um. Leanne, the future vision resonates with me as I'm currently participating in the Deepak Chopra 21 Days Abundance Meditation Challenge, which is fantastic. Love the Deepak Chopra 21 Day Abundance Meditation Challenge. But having a vision, so important. Having a vision of what you want to achieve and where you want to get to in your future. Because otherwise you're just plodding along, going up and down on the spot like a hamster on the hamster wheel, people. Some people might work in education for 35 years. My Instagram just died. Thanks, Sean. I enjoyed spending time with you and the other participants this evening. Thank you, Michael Pepper. Thank you for sharing your energy with us tonight. We're just up the road here. I'm only a 30 minute drive away from you. So definitely catch up for a coffee with you. Um, any other questions, Elizabeth? Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, oh, and lastly, people, if you didn't catch the online education summit last week, if you register now, it's already been, but if you register now, you can access all the recordings. So there's 12 speakers from all over the world, 12 keynote speakers. Some of them, you know, normally charge $5,000 for a keynote. This is all free. We put this together last week. All you need to do is go to that website, summit.energetic.education, register, and you have access to all of the presentations. So instead of watching Netflix or the news, why not learn something? You're welcome. Caitlin, thanks for the message. Thank you, beautiful people. Keep smiling, be happy and teach well.